Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, let's have a look at this question. Prove using induction that if n is a positive integer, then cos theta plus i sine theta is equal to cos n theta plus i sine n theta, where i squared is minus one. So in other words, prove using induction to Marvis theorem. Okay, so the steps for induction that you probably know already. Okay, so um, I would say my first step, show true for n equals one. Okay, so what you do is you, you sub in n is equal to one on the left hand side. Okay, so cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of one. And you show that the left hand side equals the right hand side when you sub in that one. So let's sub in one for n on the right hand side. Okay, so that's my n here, this is my n here. And cos theta plus i sine theta is indeed equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so I just basically got rid of the ones, okay, because they, do they don't do anything. So that's you showing that it's true for n is equal to one. Okay, step two, assume true for n is equal to k, okay? So for any random number k, assume that the statement is true, okay? So what are we going to assume that's true? That if we have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k, that that will be equal to cos k theta plus i sine k theta, okay? That is what we are assuming true. The third step, test the case where n is equal to k plus one. In other words, is this true for the case where n is equal to k plus one? So if we assume true for any random number k, can we show that it's also true for k plus one? Okay, so back I go here and I replace n with k plus one. So I have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus one. And I'd like to show that that is equal to cos of uh, k plus one times theta plus i sine k plus one times theta. Okay, I think that's the, the easiest way to write it down. Okay, um, so that's what I'm going to show that it's equal to. So let me work from this side here. Okay, so cos theta plus i sine theta uh, to the power of k plus one. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do to simplify that is use one of the rules of indices. Am I going the right way? I don't think I am. Where's my rules of indices? Okay, when you've got something in the powers that's added together, you can break it out. Okay, so it's the base number to P, the base number to Q. Okay, so what does that mean here? Well, it means I can write this as cos theta plus I sine theta, that's my base number to the power of K. And I can also write cos theta plus I sine theta to the power of one. Okay, so that's just using the rules of indices and then you'd add the powers, keep the base number and add the powers. Okay, um, right, so then for this one, let's use what we have up here. Okay, if we're assuming this is true, then I can write this one here as cos k theta plus i sine k theta. Okay, and then of course, this one here to the power of one is just itself cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay. Um, 
So let me just copy this because this is where we left it. Let me just go into a new page where we have more room and we're not squishing it up. Okay, so where did we leave it? We, we use the rules of indices to break it up. And then I just, because we assume uh, true for n is equal to k, we that's the output for anything to the power of k. Okay, let's multiply it out. So cos k theta by them two and these two by these two. Let's multiply it out and see what we get. So I'll end up with getting cos k theta cos theta by i times cos k theta sine theta. Okay, so that's that by those two. Now I'm coming back for these two. Plus i sine k theta cos theta plus i squared sine k theta sine theta. Okay, let's get rid of the i squared. Is there anything else I can tidy up? No. Okay. So cos k theta, cos theta plus i cos k theta sine theta plus i sine k theta cos theta minus sine k theta sine theta. So what I did there was just sub in the minus one for that. And of course, the net effect is that you'll have a plus by a minus one there, which is just this minus. Okay. Okay. So let's have a look at what we do then. Okay. Um, so in, in, in a lot of complex numbers, you end up grouping, um, I've done the wrong way around, you end up grouping reals to reals and um, imaginaries to imaginaries, okay? So therefore, I'm going to write these two beside each other. Cos k theta, cos theta, minus sine k theta, sine theta, okay? And then I'm going to factor out the i out of the other ones. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So all I'm literally doing is um, factoring out the i and grouping them together. Okay, and then what we do then is we look for trig identities um, that sum up these. Okay, so go to page, I think it's 16. Nope, this one here. Okay, and what I have, just to translate these into, um, into English for you, is cause if I say that k theta is angle A, and I call theta angle B. So I have cos A, cos B, and here I have sine. So remember my K theta is angle A, and I have sine angle B, okay? So I'm looking for a trig identity that's cos A, cos B, minus sine A, sine B. Can't remember what I said. Cos A, cos B, minus sine A, sine B. Do you see it up there up the top? Okay, so cos A, cos B minus sine A, sine B. So I can write that as cos of A plus B. Okay, so this will be cos, um, cos of A plus B. And my A is K theta and my B is theta. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And I'm gonna do the same here. What have I here? I have cos A sine B plus sine A cos B. Cos A sine B, cos A sine B. Sine A cos B, was that the other one? Yeah, okay, I, it, it's this one here, I just have it written backwards. So sine of A plus B is that one. Sine of A plus B. Okay, so to summarize, I am writing cos of theta plus I sine theta to the power of K plus one. I am saying that can be written as cos of K 
k theta plus theta plus i sine k theta plus theta. Okay, that's what I expanded out and this is where I'm at. So what you do now is you go back and you look at, well, how do you want it to look? Because remember when we subbed in n is equal to k plus one, we're saying, well, we'd like to say that that is equal to cos times k plus one times theta plus i sine k plus one times theta. Right, where are we from that? k plus one times theta. Okay, so if I factor out theta, won't I be there? So that's equal to cos of k plus one times theta. And I'm only putting theta on the right. Normally I would put what I'm factoring out on the left. I'm just putting it out on the right on this case to match what I have here. Plus I sine k plus one times theta. Okay. And I might write this one here just because that's what I was trying to prove, okay? So then you conclude, okay? So we've now proven that that's true, okay? We have, we have what we have here. So therefore, what you say is, therefore, n is equal to one, n is equal to k plus one holds true. So we've just proven it is true if n is equal to k is true, okay? So why do I have to say this bit? Well, I have to say that bit because I assumed that was true and I used it as part of my proof. So therefore my proof for n is equal to k plus one is only true assuming this is true. So that's what I'm saying here. n is equal to k plus one holds true if n is equal to k plus two. n is equal to k is true, hence, by induction, because that's our method of proof, uh, P of n is true for any positive integer. Okay, and I got that from here. If n is a positive integer, show it's true. Okay, so that is proof by induction of de Marva's theorem. Okay. And, and if you do that a couple of times, that, um, that you, you get used to it, okay? And so the last time that came up was, I believe, 2018. Okay, part B of that question then, hence or otherwise, um, find minus a half plus root three over two i to the power of three in its simplest form. Okay, so we've just proven that De Marvis theorem is true. Now we're gonna use it. Okay, and, and as you know, the Marvis theorem is written anyway in our log tables here on page 20. So to use the Marvis theorem, you have to write your complex number in polar form. Okay, so there's two pieces of information you need. You need or the distance out from the origin. And if a complex number is a plus bi, okay, then or is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, and the tan of the angle is equal to b over a, okay? That's my a, that's my b, okay? So let's let's figure that out. So r is equal to the square root of uh, minus a half squared plus root three over two squared, okay? So let me grab my calculator and figure out what that is. So square root bracket uh, minus a half, squared plus uh, bracket root three over two, close my bracket squared, missed my bracket squared, and I have got one for that. Okay, and my angle, so I'm going to again plot my a rough uh, location, a rough ar ar argon diagram for where this complex number is. In other words, what quadrant is, is it in? So I have minus a half, which would be over here, plus root three over two. So somewhere over here is minus a half plus root three over two. Okay, so when I work out my reference angle, I'll call it alpha, 
it's with respect to the x-axis, okay? And then I'll need to subtract it from 180 degrees because this is your angle of interest. We always start with the positive sense of the x-axis. So that angle, that tan of that angle alpha is equal to B over A. So it's equal to root three over two over a half, okay? And you can see I do not use the minuses in this. The minuses just gives me location. I just use the positives numbers. Okay, so alpha the angle then is equal to the tan inverse of that, root three over two over a half. So let me put that into the calculator. Tan inverse, of course, you can do it in degrees or radians. Uh, my calculator's in degrees. Ugh. The tan inverse. And I got 60 degrees for that one. Okay, um, so therefore my angle of interest, which is this angle here, theta, is equal to 180 degrees minus that 60 degrees, so 120 degrees. Okay, so then I can write minus a half plus root three over two i to the power of three as one, so it's or, so what I'm doing, there's my or, cos theta plus i sine theta cos 120 degrees plus i sine 120 degrees and of course it's to the power of three because that's what's in my question. So then apply De Marvis theorem it's or to the power of three three times the angle. So it's equal to one to the power of three cos three times the angle. Okay and then to write it in its simplest form I'm going to multiply that out again and um, to give it in, this is in rectangular form. So cos uh, three by 120, close my bracket. So I've got one for that. And then the next part is or times sine three times 120, but the or one cubed is just one. So I just need to change that cos to a sine and I'm getting one plus zero i. Okay, so one plus zero i or one in its simplest form. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision, and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify, Check out the link below.